Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you my preview for day four of Glorious Goodwood. Before we get into those just do our quick recap on today. I will admit it was a bit of a slow bailer for us today. It took a while for us to get our first winner on the board but we eventually uh, hit the jackpot with Mark of the Man for Sean Levy and Richard Hannon. Uh, one at 12 to 1 each way so that was a nice uh, winner there. We really did need that. Uh, if we hadn't have had that winner we would have definitely been at a loss today but he was a really um, a really nice performance by him. He was very professional. He reminded me of a horse in the same owners um, a couple of years ago that Rich Tannen had called Ginger Nut, and he was a bit of a slow burner as a as a two year old. It took him a bit of time to get going, and once the uh, Hannon found the key to him, he was really effective in nurseries. And I could see this horse uh, being cut from the same cloth. Uh, I thought he did the job really well, and I would be interested to see. Uh, where he goes next, maybe uh, one of those nice nurseries they normally have at uh, York at the Ebor meeting could be up his street. So that was a nice performance there. And the other nice uh, bit of profit we had or uh, a good success for us was our each way selection with Iconic Queen um, in the uh, in the novice race. She ran a blinder, I thought. She just got headed inside the last uh, half furlong uh, or so. Again, she drifted out. I think at one point you could have got a 16 or 1 birth. So, yeah, she uh, she did the job well and she just got... Um, she just uh, got out battled in the last furlong to uh, William Haggis's horse, but again, that was a nice little bit of each way profit there. So they were our two good success stories for today. I know elsewhere we had a, a few uh, fingers burnt with the likes of Zabil Champion, who I don't think uh, was maybe given the best ride by uh, Ryan Moore, but he did uh, get him finding again. He maybe wasn't the most straightforward, and he probably needed to be uh, out from the front, setting the pace. Uh, from the get-go really and he, he, he didn't get get that and he's probably once a little bit further up in trip as well I think over a mile and a half we'll, stick, so we'll see even more improvement from him so he's got lots of untapped potential in my opinion Sabil champion but it was a bit of a frustrating watch today I'm not going to lie and then the other horse uh, that I will take out today as well was in the Gordon Stakes so I actually think that was quite a nice ledger trail now Mogul I wouldn't be so keen on Mogul for the ledger but the two that I quite like were Subjectivist, who we put up. I thought he nearly got away with it. He ran a gallant race, you know. He, again, he was just closed down in the last half furlong. Uh, but I think he's going to improve going up in trip in time. And he looks exactly like his brother last year, Sir Ron Priestley. How he progressed through the handicaps and then did really well in listed races. And then went on to run a really respectable race in the ledger when making the frame. So I could see him running well. And I think English King as well is definitely a ledger horse now. I know a lot of people will say, oh, why are you going with English King for, for the ledger? Like, like you're so in love with him. Well, I'm not really. I've, I, he's been a horse that, yeah, I was impressed by his uh, Dar Lingfield Derby trial, but uh, he wasn't a horse that I really warmed to for the Derby. And I just didn't think the track would suit him. And uh, I, I, he just wasn't, he was never on my shortlist for it. Um, but seeing that performance today, I think, uh, I think uh, the, the ledger could be tailor made for him. I think uh, I think a flat track, um, or with the long straight at uh, at Doncaster would really suit him with his run style of being held up and then coming with his tremendous turn of foot, which I think he does have. But I don't think he. I think it takes him a while to to kind of to to get to get there if that makes sense to come with it and I could see him running really well in a ledger would he win probably not but at the prices I think he's double figures if he turned up double figures for the St Ledger but he probably would get found in the market if Frankie did ra ride him but if he did turn up on the day and you could maybe even still get eight to one about him I would still be really keen to back him each way for the ledger you know I think I think he could be seen to good effect on that uh, course at Doncaster but he he obviously does probably need to have maybe one more run before the ledger. Maybe he might go for the Volstagel or something. But I still think uh, we've got some unfinished business with English King. And he's a horse that I would be interested in if he did run in the St. Ledger. Anyway, enough of me talking about uh, English King. You'll want to know the tips for tomorrow. Eight races tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of selections. I think um, I think it's going to be a day, really, for horses. At the top of the market, we we don't really have too many big prices um, on our selections tomorrow, so you never know, we might have a good day. But um, it starts with the first race in the 110, and I'm going with a horse here called Mafia Power for Sylvester D'Souza and Richard Hannon in the King Power colours. Now this horse is currently 7-2 to uh, in the betting at the moment, and I'm going to recommend a win-only bet. Now this horse uh, ran off 
okay race on handicap debut at Newmarket, but the form did work out quite well because you had Zabil Champion and Al Maysan have gone on to frank that form since. He then went on to Haydock Mafia Power and he bolted up in a handicap at Haydock. He was raised £11 for that victory uh, to a mark of 85, but he was eased down in the closing stages and he could have won with any amount in hand. And I just think he's a horse that's going to improve a lot more this season. And I think he's definitely capable of defying a mark of 85. I could, I think he could still have a little bit more to come. So for me, I think Matthew Power is an interesting horse moving forward. And I think he's the one they've got to beat, in my opinion, tomorrow. And if, if there are strong market vibes, I think he'll go off favour. I think uh, I'd rather be with him than the William Haggis horse that I believe that is currently favourite. So, yeah, the 110 Mafia Power it, it is to hopefully get um, the job done in the open. We then go to the 145, and this was quite a competitive race on paper, but I thought the three-year-olds held the key here. One master, even though she can go on quickish ground, I think she's best seen uh, with a bit of ease in, in the ground. But uh, for me, I thought Valeria Messalinia for Frankie de Torre and Jessica Harrington could be the one to play here. Currently 10-1, to 1, you can get four places, and that was the current price at the time of recording with William Hill. Now, this horse finished ninth on the, uh, in the Irish 1,000 guineas. On her first start of the season, she then dropped back to seven furlongs last time and she won the Group 3 Brownstown Stakes at Cork. Now, I thought that was a really nice effort that day and she did it in quite a reasonably quick time as well. And Jessica Harrington had a nice runner today in, in the Nassau Stakes with uh, one voice, I think it was, finished second behind Fancy Blue. And uh, I think they, they, send, they wouldn't send her over unless they thought she had a good chance. And uh, I think Seven Furlongs is definitely her trip. She's a horse that likes to be prominent. I think that style of running could suit her tomorrow as well. Um, and Frankie's normally really good, I think, normally judging the pace from the front. So, yeah, I think uh, Va Valeria Messalina with the three-year-old wait for age allowance tomorrow. She does have to give away the Group 3 penalty, though. So she is gonna, she's not going to get the full allowance. But still, nonetheless, you know, I think she's got a lot more to come. You know, and I think she's an improving filly, and I think she's got a fair chance. She does have a wide draw tomorrow, but at the prices, I think she's worth a little bit of value there. And for me, she'll do at 10 to 1 each way. That's Valeria Messalinia. We then go in the tw uh, 2.15, um, and th you can make a case for quite a few few of these runners in here, even though it's a small field. But I think Kalusi has got to be the obvious one. He's 8 to 11. I do think that's a backable price if you wanted to stick him in a double with something. Uh, maybe a double with Batash, maybe, or a treble. But uh, Kalusi for Jim Crowley and Roger Varian, you can back him at 8 to 11. I don't think that's that's actually a ridiculous price. He absolutely bolted up in the Britannia on soft ground. That might be the only concern tomorrow. Um, is he going to handle this quicker surface? But nonetheless, you know, that form of the Britannia couldn't have worked out any better. He won it off a mark of 94, and he was raised £17 for it. Uh, but if you look through the form, the second, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the 8th and the ninth have either won or finished in the first three on uh, their subsequent starts. You know? So it's a deep, deep race that's thrown out some uh, some good good results already. And Kalusi, you've got to think, he's got to be trying this company now after his impressive win. Like I said, the only concern might be the ground, but Roger Varian's team in good form. Jim Crowley's been riding really well this season in the big races, and I just think this is Kalusi's to lose. So for me, at 8 to 11, he might be a bit short for some people, but I don't think he's actually that, that bad a problem. So for me, he's going to be the selection there. We then go with my uh, nap tomorrow, which runs in the 2.45. I'm going with Sabaska here for Oshin Murphy and William Knight. You can currently get him at 6-1. to one, and I'm going to recommend an each-way bet here with the five places. Now, this horse just doesn't know how to not run a bad race. He won at Newcastle in a race that worked out really well on his seasonal reappearance. He then went to Royal Ascot, where he won there. And then he ran in the Bunbury Cup last time. And he ran a blinder to finish second by uh, Muta Kael, who was a Royal Ascot winner too. So there was a lot to like about his performances. He is now off a mark of 107, so he is going to have to give away a lot of weight. But I still think we haven't got to the bottom of it um, yet. And I think maybe if he goes and wins this, which I think he can do tomorrow, uh, he will then have to step up into group company and he would be worth a shot, shot at it. He is actually a course winner as well. He won here at the course last season. I believe I actually backed him last season, but I never thought he would end up uh, this good. But he's just a horse that I just think he, he's, he's really hard to, to, to falter this year. And he's just in the form of his life. And at 6-1... to one, 
yeah, he's not the most original selection in the world, but I think that's a good little bit of value. And I'd be disappointed if he didn't finish in the first five. I know Sheen knows him really well, and I think he's uh, the one they've all got to beat tomorrow. I think he's actually slightly better than, than the William Haggis horse, but that's just my own opinion. But he does have some strong form, obviously, the Malathan. But for me, I think Sabaska, I think he'll get the job done. And uh, a six to one, I think that's still a little bit of value there. We then go to the three fifteen, and I'm not really going to waste too much time here for this race. But Tash, I think he just wins for Jim Crowley and Charlie Hills. He just seems to be getting better. For it, it was a nice comeback at Ascot when he won the King Stand, a racer as uh, that's plagued him in recent years uh, with Blue Point winning the last couple of renewals. But there was no Blue Point this year. And he ran a fair race, you know, he's one to three. Would I want to get stuck in backing him as a single? Probably not. But if you want to put him in a multiple with a double with something or a treble, yeah, I think he I think he'll do the job. And uh, this is a race he absolutely loves. He's going for his fourth consecutive win in the race, and for me, Batash, it's his to lose, really. So I'm not gonna to waste too much time on him. We then go to the 345, and this is where my next vest is gonna come in, communicate an old favourite of mine. Uh, for John, uh, Joe Fanning and Mark Johnston. You can currently back him at 9-4. to four. And I remember when he was a three-year-old, I actually backed him at Glorious Goodwood uh, when he won, hit, uh, won a handicap here as a three-year-old. I was working for BBC Radio Sussex that, that year. And uh, I remember when he won, uh, he was really progressive. And then even last year, he still kept finding, you know, he was a Group 2 winner, won a couple of times at Newmarket. He loves the July course, but he can go well here. And he ran back to form last time, finishing second at York. Just got collared by Eagles by day, which probably was over a bit of a longer, too much of a longer trip for him. I think a mile and a half is his forte. And I think this is this is not the strongest of renewals for him in this race. And also as well, he's not going to have to give away any penalties. So... I just think at nine or four, he's a good, he's a good thing tomorrow. And for me, I'd be disappointed if he's not winning that race. So for me, communicate is in the three forty-five, the group three there. We then go to the four twenty, and again, this is not an original selection here. I'm going with Zamani for Will Buick and Simon and Ed Crisford. Currently two to one, but this horse has got some really strong form. Um, he finished fifth at Newmarket uh, behind uh, Tactical, and Tactical's obviously done that form wonders. He then went to, uh, to Windsor and he beat Supremacy, who's now uh, a Group 2 winner, winning the uh, Richmond Stakes today. And then he went and broke his duck by winning the next time out. So he's got a lot of form next to his name. He's been given a mark of 87. I think on what he's achieved so far, he's he's the one they've all got to beat. And at 2-1, to one, I think that's not a bad price. And again, if you wanted to stick him in a multiple, I think he could get the job done for you. And that we then end with our last tip of the day in the 4.55. Again, another newcomer's race here for the two-year-olds. Fort Ventura Diamond could take a step forward. Richard Farr, he's two-year-olds. Have definitely been needing the run this year, I think. And you currently back this horse at 10-3. And Oshin Murphy rode a winner for Richard Farhi the other day. So they are Obviously, uh, he's a bit of a go-to man at the moment for him, uh, for this, for his uh, Southern Raiders. But this horse finished uh, fourth on debut at Sandown in a race won by Miss Jingles uh, for Charlie Appleby. That uh, horse went on to win the conditions race at uh, at uh, Goodwood yesterday. So, yeah, the form's working out all right. And I think this horse will come come on for the run. And at 10-3, in a race where there's some newcomers in here, I would always want to side with a bit of experience. Goodwood can be a bit of a, a tricky track uh, for two-year-olds. And I think having that little bit of experience could just serve server and good said tomorrow so for me ventura diamond 10-3 again are not a not original selection but still nonetheless you know i think it'll go really close so they're the tips on uh, day four of glorious goodwood tomorrow not the most original of selections i know but i think it's going to be a day for horses that are prominent in the betting and i'd be disappointed if we couldn't get a few winners from these selections so um if you haven't done so already please make sure you hit the subscribe button for more videos here on my youtube channel you can also follow me on twitter as well where my handle is at lucky loader 15 and if you want to follow a little bit more about myself and check out my work you can do by going to my website which is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk so that's all i've got to get, say on that score please gamble responsibly hopefully we can have some winners tomorrow i'll be seeing you soon